We shall behold him. And one thing that I do know, he is coming. And he's coming soon, whether you like it or not. And as Sister Bonnie was talking, it's amazing how sometimes we really don't be paying attention. Either who, I don't care who's talking. But there are some things that we need to pay attention to. Because when the skies open up, and the trumpet sounds to pay attention will be too late because Jesus will be standing in the air and the dead in Christ will have risen and those of us, some of us, who remain. The rest of us, I guess, be caught up. The rest will be left behind. Whichever category we fall in. But remember that Jesus is the way. And the Bible says he is the truth and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Another thing I was just reading the other day in my Bible. I do that sometime. And realizing that he knows our thoughts. The first time I read that, it was a few years ago, but the first time I read that, I said, whoa. You can't get away with nothing. So we can come to church and we can put on a show, put on our game face or whatever you call it. And in our hearts, oh boy, we are just thinking some stuff that you would get arrested on if you was, it would ever come out what you were thinking. But the sad thing is Jesus knows. So what I'm simply saying to you is make sure that your thoughts are pure. Philippians 4 and 8 will give you some of the things you need to think about just in case you don't know what you should think. We give honor this morning to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to our, the God the Father who sent him to die for us to our pastor and his family in his absence to the official staff and board of the church and to all the fellow ministers, ministers, and to my lovely wife who make this holy gathering, and even to our children, we thank God for them, and for each of every one of you. No, I don't plan to be standing up here before you very long. What the Holy Ghost does, that's a different story. But if you didn't come in with him on your mind or in your heart, that's sad. But it's okay. Because the name above every name is in the house. And that's what I'm most happy about. That he's in the house when we're in the house and our minds are outside the house. But he is still in the house. I'm going to share with you a scripture and then I'm going to share with you something about the scripture 
and I'm going to share with you a story from the scripture. And then I'm going to let you go home. Of course, now you can leave before then, but I don't think it'd be very good on your behalf to do that. Because the Lord might have something for you to hear. Just might. Now, I'm not saying he is, but he might have something for you. He wants you to hear. And since uh, I put it together, I, I've already heard it. My toes already aching, so I just step on yours for a while. You know, there's an old saying that misery love company. Well, it's not misery, but I tell you what, when you're not right with God, some things happen with you when you hear the word whether you believe it or not, or whether you accept it or not. Just remember, church, Jesus is coming. The scripture I want to share with you today comes from the book of Luke. And it's the 15th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. And it says, a certain man had two sons. And the young of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Now at the end of this story, you, you will see that somewhere along the line, them didn't come into play in one of the sons' mind, but he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, and he took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with Rodrios, Rodrios living. And I'm going to stop there for a moment, and the Lord say the same, we will catch up that part of the story somewhere down the road. But one of the things I want to say is there is a problem in America, and I talk about America because that's where I was born, raised, and lived most of my life, although I might have lived other places, but America is home. But we find that the situations in life for our young people is going downhill. Because even back then, there was a son who did not want to obey the rules around the house. He want what he didn't work for, nor did he put it in place for a later time, but daddy had provided and he took it for granted that daddy owed him something when he died. But he didn't want daddy to die before he got what was coming to him. And daddy should have really gave what he was what coming to him. Like many parents today, we don't give them what's coming to them. We let them tell us what they want and we go ahead and do it. And I'll say amen because nobody else have to, but I know that's a fact. Of course, my kids would disagree with you. But the point of it is, there's an old song back in the day when I was growing up that said, let us all go back to the old landmark and, and get in the service of the Lord. See, in today's society, we need to go back a little bit and start checking out some of the things that brought us this far on our way under the old landmark. Because as we find this story, we find that it is actually happening day after day, month after month, year after year in the country in which we live. And we are hoping things get better well, hope is good to have, because without hope, you, you, you lost anyway. 
You, you, you don't have a reason for living. That's why people commit suicide, because they're without hope. They don't have no hope. They don't see no hope. And they don't know how to get any hope. So therefore, they don't want to hear nothing about hope. But I tell you, there is hope in the name of Jesus. Somebody we don't like to talk too much about, but therefore he exists, and I'm glad he does. But this man, he went on and he allowed himself to listen to the desires of his son. And he gave him what he would have gotten in his will. So he had it up front now. He's a man. He got it all. Now I know he couldn't take the crops with him and nothing like that and the sheep and the cattle or goats or whatever his dad gave him. So he probably sold it for whatever currency they had during those days. Put it all in his pocket and went on his merry way. Well, the Bible says when he got where he was going or where he thought he was going or where he thought he needed to be, he started spending his money. This part is my story. Setting up the boys. Going from place to place. Him and his friends having fun. While his father was back home, crying his eyes out, beating his chest, doing whatever he needed to do because he was missing his son. He wanted the child back home. Now, I hope none of you have been in that situation where you just miss your children so much you, where all you do is want to see them again. But the point of it is, he did not know whether his son was living or whether he was dead. All he knew is he wanted him home. You see, at home, you can put your arms around him. You can tell him you love him whether or not he believe it or not. Whether he accepts it or not. But that's what a father does. Now, mothers, I'm not leaving you out because I know how you are about your youngins. We call them children or youngins and whatever, but I know how you are. And especially when they are out of sight, they're definitely not out of mind. So the father didn't really know what he was going to do. All he knew that he had a son that was not at home. It just so happened that the father had servants around the house. And I'm going to introduce you to a few of them this morning. Those servants have been with the father a long time. They've seen and brought him and helped him through some terrible situations. They took care of the kids so dad could have ease of mind when he was out working or uh, taking care of business. He didn't have to worry about the children because he knew that they were well taken care of. And there was four servants that I'm going to introduce you to. But the one that I want to introduce you to first, his name was Love. Love went to the father one day and he said, Master, he said, I, I know you miss your son. He said, but if you would allow me to take some time off, I'll go find him and bring him home. The master looked at him and thought that was a great idea. So he uh, told him, uh, go ahead and get the provisions ready and take your leave. And I'll be waiting for your return. So love went on out there and he traveled for some time. And he found the son doing his own thing. 
See, we understand that today. You know, what the son was doing back then, we don't know, but we call it a thing today. So he was doing his own thing in his own time and his own way. So love went up to him and he said, son, your dad sent me out to bring you home. He said, you know your dad loved you. And there was nothing but love around the house. And I'm still there. The son looked at him and he said, love, what you have to do with it? Love, as far as he was concerned, had nothing to do with it. He said, I'm having the best time of my life. And I have more love out here than I ever saw at home. So love, he hung with him out there for a while and he could not convince the son to come home. So he went on back to the father's house and his head was hanging low. His father saw him coming, his master saw him coming and he said, well, I guess you couldn't bring him home. <clears throat> he said, no, sir, he wouldn't come home with me. And then there was another servant. He was standing by listening to the report. And he said, I, I could do better than that. I guarantee you, if the master let me go, I'll bring him home. So he went to the master and he said, Master, I hear love couldn't bring the son home. And he said, no. He said, but I, I, I tell you what, if you let me go, I'll bring him home. That servant name was Peace. And so he said, well, Peace, I tell you what, I'll give you a try. And Peace went on and he found the son and after he found the son he began to talk about the peace that was around the house and he looked at the situation and the turmoil that his son was living in at the time if there was always fighting going on and fussing going on and everything was going on except peace so peace tried to encourage him to come on and go home with me because there is peace in the father's house and you don't have to worry about the turmoil you're going through right now. But peace shook his head and he said, I know there was peace at the house, but I'm having my own kind of peace out here. I don't have to listen at what daddy has to say about it. So I'm going to stay here and you can go ahead and tell him that I'm not coming home. Well, peace went on back home. And the father saw him as he was coming and he realized that his son wasn't with him. So therefore, there was another servant waiting to hear the report. And when that servant heard the report of peace, he said within himself, I can do better than that. Because I can convince the son to come home. So, that servant name was Joy. Joy went on into the father he said I heard what peace had to say but I believe I can do better than peace I believe I can convince the son that there's joy around the house even when we sit down around the table there's joy about the things that we talk about even in the midnight hour when 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 he used to cry there was joy when you go in and just rub his head. He said, I can help him to remember the joy that he had when he was here. So the master said, 
Joy, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. But I just don't believe that he's going to come home with you. So Joy went out there and he found the son. And the son was out there doing many things that he felt that brought him joy. And while he was out there, he picked up a few friends. And he felt that his friends brought him joy. So he had a homewonger friend that stayed down the block from him. So he went down to homewonger's house and tried to show joy what time he had when he and homewonger got together. Then homewonger said, I tell you what, let's go and show joy where liar live. So he went down to his liar friend's house. So liar, I want to introduce you to another one of my father's workers. And I, I want you to let him know that you are a friend of mine. And you take care of me when things go a little bit wrong. You help me control my money and help me spend it. Liar said, you right about that. And you know I'll never turn you down. I'm always stand by your side. I'm always help you spend your money. Because he wasn't lying then. So the son says, you see joy. I have everything I need out here. So you go home and you tell daddy, I'm not coming home. So Joy packed up his bags and he went on back to the father's house. And he got there and he gave his report. And when he began to tell him some of the things that the son was doing, the father just hung his head and fell on his knees and began to call on the name of the Lord. Well, while joy, peace, and happiness, and all that came out to try to help him, the son really couldn't see the need of being bothered with his father's servants. But the Bible say after a while, all of his money began to drain. You see, the old folks used to tell us that we spend money like we got holes in our pockets. We ain't had that much no way. But we either just blew it and throw it away. And so the Bible says he came into a time when there was a famine in the land he visited. And then his money began to drain and look like his friends began to do the same. So when he went down to Homonger's house, he let him know that I only got a few things that I could hold for myself, so I can't help you. So when he got down to Liar's house, he said, Liar, I need a few coins to tie me over. Because you are my friend. Liar says, son, don't you know my name? I'm not your friend. I wasn't your friend when I told you I was your friend. I, my name is a liar, and I've been a liar all the time. So therefore, I can't help you. So the son, he was getting down in the spirit. And the Bible let me know that he was looking around for a job. Somebody who had it all at home. But now he's looking for a job. He's looking to find some way he can feed himself. So it let me know that he went down and found a man who had a job feeding swine. We call them hogs. Well, he went down to the hog pen. And he was so hungry that he wanted to eat what the hogs was eating. And he began to look at himself and say, what have I got myself into? You know, some of our young people today, and I'm talking about old folks too, 
they're all young because all of us had fathers and mothers. But all of us didn't travel in the right road at the beginning. But I want to tell you today that he went down there and he began to meditate on the things and the status of his life. And so therefore, he said, I can't go back to my father right now. I haven't built up my stash back yet. But the Bible let me know he was a hungry child. So after Joy went back and the old servant around the house that had been there a long time, and uh, he, he'd been with the father before the father knew himself. And his name was Time. And so he went to the master and said, Master, if you will allow me to go and find the son, I will bring him home. And he said, Time, you, you're getting too old now to be traveling such a distance. He said, That's all right, master. I know I can make it. So time went on out there and began to search for the sun. And when he caught up with the sun, he began to look at him and said, Son, you've gotten yourself in a mess in the things that you're doing. But he said, Why, you old man of all of the servants coming out here trying to convince me to come home. So the son kept on feeding the swine but wanting to eat what they had to eat. And so when he got off his job and he got a few coins uh, in his pay, he went on back down to some of his friend's house. Time didn't say nothing. He went on back down to his friend's house with him, and he just sat there. And as he parted and drank and did everything that the hog man paid him for wages, time just sat there and waited on him. And I want to tell you today that time just would not go home. He just followed the sun from place to place. Even if they had a four street live, I believe he'd have followed him there and just waited on him. And I want to tell you today that time will bring you in. And so when the sun decided that, wait a minute, the Bible says he came to himself. And he said, how many servants my father has that got more than I have? He said, I will go home to my father and I will tell him, Father, I'm not worthy to be your son. So make me one of your hired servants. And the Bible says, oh, time just looked at him. And when the son came off that job, he began to walk on toward home. And time began to walk on behind him. I want to tell you today, church, if you are running around doing all you think you can do, if you are running around having your own time, if you are running around without Jesus in your life, I want to tell you that time will bring you in. He might catch up with you in the wrong place, but time will bring you in. I think you ought to understand this and say hallelujah, glory to God, because time is waiting on you. You don't know when it's going to catch up with you. I see so many times on the news report, young people, time is catching up with them in the wrong place. They're dying in the streets. They're dying in the cars. They're dying all over the place because they thought they had time to do all the things they wanted to do. But I want to tell you today, you keep putting it off that you're going to come to the Lord after you've done all you wanted to do. But I want to tell you that time will bring you in. And you don't have to worry because it'll be right there with you. You can go on and have your fun. It'll be right there with you. You can go on and do your thing. It'll be right there with you. You can go on and have your parties. It can be right there with you. You can have your tailgate and all the other gates you got. It'll be right there with you. But one of these old days, time going to catch up with you. The Lord is going to call your name. And you're going to have to answer whether you like it or not. So I want to tell you today that time will bring you in. And you don't have to be 
old to get there. Time is old, but you don't have to get old. And I just want to let you know today, if you have been thinking like the prodigal son, as the story goes, time is standing right by. And it will bring you in. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Time. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to play the song. And I pray that if you are here and you've been waiting and putting off, giving your life to the Lord, the Bible says if you would confess, you first got to believe in your heart. And you confess with your mouth that God has raised his son from the dead. You will be saved. Now that sounds easy, doesn't it? But a lot of people won't do it. Hallelujah. Time. We'll bring you in. Hallelujah. He's on time, He's on time God. Yes, he Go ahead and turn it up a little bit. Oh, on time, God.
Hallelujah. See, you can act like that, but you know he's a long time God. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. just want to say to you before we let you go that church I know many of us were sitting in here when Sister Bonner was talking this morning and out of all the truth that she told I wonder how many really was listening because it is time that we start practicing what we say we preach See, when we get to heaven, we always talk, when we get to heaven, we're going to jump and shout, and we can't even do nothing down here. We don't, I mean, we don't act like we enjoy nothing except a football game. We jump and we shout. We holler and we hoop. And we tailgate and all these other things. But church, let's get it together. Jesus is worthy to be praised. And regardless of what you think of me or anybody else, he is going to be on time for you and for me. And there will be no more time for us to get it together. Amen? Amen. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we do thank you right now for this day and for all that you have done and for what you're going to do. We thank you for every soul in this building right now. We thank you for all our children. And Lord God, let us realize that <clears throat> we're in some trying times in America. And Father God, you told us to watch and pray. And Father God, we need to learn how to watch and pray and to do everything according to your word, your will, and your way. That when you do split those clouds and you come back to get the church, we'll be in the number, in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, we glorify you, we magnify you. And in the precious name of Jesus, we will continue to claim our victories in Jesus' name. And the body of Christ says... Hallelujah. God bless you. God keep you. Uh, just a minute. We have an announcement to make, please. Doc Robinson, my wife, is going to make it for you. Good morning, everyone. Next Sunday is the Feast of Tabernacles, and we would love to have all of you back to come celebrate that with us. Not only that, um, during the, ce the celebration, we always bring foods for the food bank, and they are presented on the altar during that time. So please, everyone, bring something for our food bank. The holidays are coming up, and we need to take care of the people. Now, we're also going to bless you next Sunday, because immediately after the feast in here, the service, we'll go to the other building, and we will have a feast dinner. So you don't have to cook next week, okay? God bless you.